actually put makeup on for today's video, so praise me, celebrate in the streets, it's a miracle. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Allie. If you're new, hello. If you're returning, welcome back. I appreciate you. Thanks for not being sick of me yet. So today, another book recommendation video for one of my all-time favorite book tropes, which is fake dating along with like the marriage of convenience trope. That's always been one of my favorites. So I figured that I would recommend you guys some of my favorite books from that trope. Hopefully I give you guys some new recommendations that you haven't heard of that you seem interested in. So yeah, let's get right into it. So first up, on the Kindle, it should still be on Kindle Unlimited is Redeemed by Lauren Asher. This is the fourth book in the Dirty Air series. It's a companion novel series. You don't have to read them in order. I think they all still read well enough to not be read in order. If anything, I feel like you at least need to read the first book before you read Redeemed. You don't have to, but I feel like storyline-wise it might just make a little bit more sense if you read the first one first. This whole series is a sports romance following Formula One racers. Redeemed, fourth book of Dirty Air, this follows Santi and Chloe. Santi was in a crash and he lost his leg so he can no longer drive and he's kind of just depressed. Just kind of turns into a jerk and doesn't want anybody to help him. He doesn't love his life anymore. One day Chloe breaks into his house because she needs to get something from him and yeah. But she breaks into his house and when she breaks into his house, Santi's sister and her husband along with his nephew are there. So they're all like, um, who is this person? He's supposed to be babysitting their son and if he looks irresponsible, they're not gonna let him babysit their son. So he's like, oh, this is my girlfriend. And she's like, what the fuck? But okay. They start fake dating to convince his sister and her husband that he's not crazy and he lives in a place that's safe for their son to be around. But the relationship is very cute. It's also grumpy sunshine in a way because he is so depressed and having such a hard time and Chloe wakes him back up inside and like lets him know that he's not broken, you know, that he still has a life to live. She makes him feel things again and it's just very cute. It was probably my favorite book out of the entire series. I four and five starred the entire series, but Redeemed is probably my favorite book from that entire series. So I definitely recommend it. The Dirty Air series as a whole, I highly recommend. It has brother's best friend, friends to lovers. It's got enemies to lovers, fake dating, all the things. I recommend the entire series as a whole. So go check it out if you haven't. Next up, I feel like a fairly popular kind of a classic for the fake dating is Marriage for One by Ella Mays. Also should still be on Kindle Unlimited. This follows Jack and Rose. Titanic names. Cute. Basically one of Rose's family members dies and she's set to inherit this corner store building that she wants to turn into a cafe. But the catch is she can't own or receive this building inheritance if she's not married. Jack is kind of the lawyer that's kind of handling all their stuff. So he initiates to Rose that they get engaged and married so that she can get get this building like he just needs good press you know he's 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 fine you find out his motives later on in the book their relationship is so cute it's probably one of my favorite fake dating marriage of convenience books it's very popular for a reason rose ends up getting her coffee store and it's him buying flowers to help her decorate the place helping her set everything up their relationship is adorable and i love it it's definitely a boy falls first definitely grumpy sunshine he's very stoic and she's also bubbly making and feel things again. I five starred it. I can't get enough of this book. So if you have not read it, you're missing out. Go check it out. Next up, another super popular book. It's been all over book talk recently. It is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. So this follows Olive and Adam. Adam is a professor at a college. Allie is a grad student at that college. Adam is one of her like professors. Olive kind of has like a non-existent love life and her friend keeps trying to like set her up on dates and stuff. So she tells a lie to her friend that she has a date later that night and and so Olive kind of panics because she's told her friend that she has a boyfriend and she's going out on dates when she doesn't so she kind of panics and just ends up kissing the literal first person she sees who happens to be Adam. Their relationship is so cute. This book is extremely popular for a really good reason. I love the grad student like adult of this. It's not just why, like YA kids in high school. I really like the female and science thing. It's so good. I love Adam. I just do. I love him. That's all. So next up, what I feel like is another classic, mainly because it's turned into such like a popular Netflix series, To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. I read this series in like middle school. This one's a signed copy too. Don't mean to toot my own horn, but like 
too, too, bitch. I love Johnny Han. I also love The Summer I Turned Pretty, which is turning into an Amazon Prime series. That's more of a like childhood friends to lovers situation. If you don't know to All the Boys I Loved Before, I feel like at this point everybody has. You've either read the books or watched the movie or both. Obviously, I like the books a little bit better because they go into more detail as more book series do. But if you don't know anything about this, this follows Laura Jean. She is kind of this hopeless romantic and she throughout her life has written love letters to every boy that she's like ever had a crush on. And one day they accidentally get mailed out on accident. She doesn't know how. So all of these boys that she's ever written love letters to, I think there's five or six, end up getting these confession letters in the mail. So our main male love interest in this is Peter. It's kind of a love triangle between Peter and Josh. Josh is Lara's older sister, Margot's ex-boyfriend. They broke up when she left for college, but Lara has had a crush on him her entire life growing up. So her incentive to fake dating Peter is she doesn't want Josh to think that the feelings she had for him were ever real and that she still cares about him. Like she doesn't want to be the sister that's dating her sister's ex-boyfriend. Like she doesn't want to offend her sister like that or ruin her relationship that she has with Josh. So she's just trying to send him any message she can to let him know that she's not interested. So she decides to fake date Peter and then Peter on the other hand also receives a love letter. He agrees to fake date Lara to make his ex-girlfriend jealous. They've recently broke up and he wants her back. So he decides that if he moves on and dates Lara, it will make his ex-girlfriend jealous and they'll want to get back together. This is a three book series, three movies on Netflix. I loved this series. I probably four star it now because it is YA and I'm 22 when I read this when I was like 14 or 15, but I still adore this series. I have it on my bookshelf of like middle school aesthetics with all my Hunger Games and Divergence and stuff. This is probably just like one of my all-time favorite romance books because it got me hooked on it at such a young age and really made me fall in love with the romance genre. If you haven't checked it out yet, please do. Watch the movies. They're still very good. Jenny Han was super involved in them. She cameos in a lot of the movies. They're great. I love them. They're a fake dating classic. Next up, another super popular series, the Addicted series by Chris Christia. Krista and Becca Ritchie. This main series is five books and then there is a four book series spinoff. But for Fake Dating Marriage of Convenience, mainly the main five book Addicted series. This follows Lily and Lo. They have been best friends since childbirth. It's also a childhood friends to lovers. They both are struggling with addiction. Lo is an alcoholic. Lily has a sex addiction pretty much since middle school. Have been fake dating each other to be able to cover up each other's addictions. If Lily wants to go out to a party or something, she can say she's with Lo. And if Lo wants to go somewhere and drink, he can say he's with Lily. They fake date in the beginning to enable each other, which is obviously wrong. They eventually start real dating. They eventually are forced into in an engagement that they don't want to be in. So it's fake dating at first, real dating, kind of forced into a marriage that they don't want to be in yet. Very much has fake dating and marriage convenience in it. This series as a whole, I probably gave four stars. The first two or three books, I wasn't really a fan of Lowe's character. I didn't really like him as a person, but as the series moves on and they both start dealing with their addictions and getting help, I ended up really liking Lowe's character and just his transition from where he was in the beginning of the series to where he was at the end. I recommend the whole series. Go check it out. Lily and Lowe are an amazing couple. I love this series, so go check it out if you haven't. Next up is The Sweetest Oblivion. This is... What is the word? Why can't I think? What? It's not mob. It's not gang. Mafia. The word is mafia. I figured it out. <laughs> so this is a mafia romance book. So far the biggest mafia romance fan. This is the only series that I've read so far because it wasn't necessarily my favorite. I haven't given up on it yet. There's some other series that I at least want to try. This follows Elena and Nicholas. They are in the mob. Mob books, you gotta throw out your feminism. It doesn't exist. Zero zip nada. Obviously mafia romances have arranged marriages so they are forced to be married. Enemies to lovers also because they absolutely cannot stand each other in the beginning. I like to think that their relationship is cute in a non-feminist sense. Definitely controlling, definitely kind of toxic because it's mafia romance. That's about it. If you like mafia romance and you haven't read it yet, I definitely suggest it. I think it's a fairly good place to start if you're trying to get into mafia romance. Again, I think I three or four starred it because I don't necessarily know if mafia romance as a genre is my thing, but I'm still working on it. I'm gonna try a couple more and circle back to it and see what I think. It's definitely Marriage of Convenience. Go check it out if you have not.
following up with a, another what seems to turn into a classic for the fake dating marriage of convenience trope Spanish love deception I adore this book I have reread it so many times I 100 billion thousand percent five starred it this follows Lena and Aaron Lena has recently not recently about a year ago broke up with her ex-boyfriend who kind of ruined her life and now her sister is getting married and she is going to have to travel back to Spain for her sister's wedding but she doesn't want to show up alone because that'd be embarrassing because her ex-boyfriend is the best man she doesn't want to show up alone and like give him the pleasure of knowing that she's still single and that he's like ruined her life and whatnot so she is looking for someone to pretend to be her boyfriend to go to this wedding with her Aaron needs a date for this benefit auction he's going to he and Lena come together and decide to fake date both for Aaron's benefit and Lena's wedding travels this is also an enemies to lovers like workplace romance thing. They both work together. Lena thinks that he's just a dick. Aaron secretly is in love with her. I love them. Aaron is one of my favorite book boyfriends. They're so cute. It's definitely Boy Falls First. Definitely Grumpy Sunshine. Aaron is very stoic. Lena is not. Their banter, their comments they make to each other, I live for. Again, it's popular for a reason. Please, please, please go read it if you haven't. I cannot recommend it enough. So next is Wall of Winnipeg Me by Mariana Zapata. Mariana Zapata, so it's very much slow burn as well. Sports romance, I like it but it's not my favorite Mariana Zapata book. For fake dating, marriage of convenience it definitely fits this trope. This follows Vanessa and Aiden. Aiden is a professional football player in the NFL. Vanessa is his personal assistant. It's also grumpy sunshine. Aiden like never talks to her. He says like hi, yes, no and that's like the end of any of their conversations. He just kind of takes advantage of Vanessa and like her kindness and her worth ethic and she doesn't feel appreciated so she eventually quits because she just can't stand working for him anymore. She's stopped working for him for about a month and she comes home one day to Aiden just standing on her doorstep at her house. He is begging for Vanessa to come work for him but under the condition of them being married. He needs to settle down to help with his reputation a little bit. Vanessa needs help paying for house and her student loans and everything and Aiden's basically like, hey, like I will pay you to be with me. So she's like, you know what? Frick it, let's do it. Very cute. I love their relationship. Very much Grumpy Sunshine, which I also adore. Let me know if you guys want a recommendation video for Grumpy Sunshine because that's also one of my favorite tropes and I have lots of recommendations for that. Mariana Zapata, very slow burn. It's 90% of the book where they don't even kiss. I four starred it. It's still very good. Yeah, go check it out if you haven't. So next up is a not so mute cute. This very much reminds me of Marriage for One. So this follows Lottie and Hux. Hux is a millionaire corporate CEO. Lottie has recently lost her job and is also in a situation where she needs to be paying off student loans and can't afford it. So Lottie decides that she's going to jog through the rich neighborhood and see if she will just bump into a rich man and somehow weasel her way into a relationship. That's her plan. Hux is supposed to be making a deal with another company for them to work together. He is very cold and the man from the other company tells him no because he doesn't like him as a person so he doesn't want to work with their company. Hux runs into him later in the day and the man he's trying to make the deal with is going to a restaurant with his fiance who is pregnant so Hux kind of freaks out in his mind and he tells him a lie that he is also engaged and his fiance is pregnant trying to relate to him and get him to say yes to their business deal. He He's like, I just gotta be friends with him and this is the only way. So the guy he's trying to make a deal with invites Hux and his non-existent pregnant fiance to dinner with them. So Hux is like, well crap, I definitely don't have a pregnant fiance or any woman to even call a girlfriend. So he's freaking out now that he has to find someone to go to dinner with him the upcoming weekend. He walks out of the building where he bumps in to Lottie who is trying to execute her plan of walk through the rich neighborhood and find a husband. It works. They start fake dating because Hux told Lottie that if she agrees to this again he will pay off her student loans she needs that financial freedom and she needs money to like move out of her house and whatnot Hux obviously needs it to be able to make this business deal it's very much marriage for one vibes in the sense of girl that needs financial help and millionaire man grumpy sunshine I loved them I thought they were really cute Hux and their relationship is great spice in it very good I definitely recommend it especially if you are a marriage for one fan really check it out and I don't think you'll be disappointed so then fixer up by Tessa Bailey 
Lily. This is technically a companion novel series. I unknowingly read them out of order, so you can read them out of order because I had no idea it was a series in the first place. You can definitely read it as a standalone. It won't make the storyline confusing or anything. This follows Georgie and Travis. It's also kind of a brother's best friend situation. Travis is a professional baseball player. Georgie is a kid's party clown. <laughs> it's also grumpy sunshine because Travis is really grumpy and just stoic and Georgie is quite literally a professional clown. He is currently injured and doesn't know if he'll be able to physically play ball again, but he is up for a sports cast or a sports announcer position, but he has such a bad rep in the forms of every other day there's an article about him getting in trouble somewhere that his manager is like, hey, you need to like lay low, like get in a relationship, like cool it down, make this company like you so that they'll hire you. Georgie, because she is a professional clown, nobody in her town takes her seriously and she's always belittled by her family and just treated like a child all the time. So she decides that if she gets into a serious relationship, that might make people in town respect her a little bit more. She also has had a crush on Travis her whole life. So they start fake dating so that Travis can work on his appearance to the press and everything and Georgie can work on becoming more adultish, I guess. I think I three started this book. It wasn't my favorite. I had a really high expectations for it. I don't necessarily think it lived up to them. Travis's character wasn't my favorite. I three started it. I still liked it enough to read it and I like it enough to recommend it. It's definitely not my favorite book out of everything that I've recommended, but it is still good and I do suggest you read it if it sounds like something that you'd be interested in. So then The Soulmate Equation by Christina Warren. This follows Jess and River. Jess is a single mom. River is a scientist. This is also kind of grumpy sunshine in a way. River has created this new dating app that matches people through DNA. So it's supposed to be like your most accurate love match because you DNA match each other. It's not just like, oh, we both like dogs. We both like the color purple. So it's supposed to be a much more accurate dating thing. Jess's best friend is trying to get her back into the dating scene. Jess hasn't because she's just been focusing on raising her daughter Juno. Her friend eventually talks her into it. She signs up for like the beginning stages of River's new dating system. It ends up she and River are like 99.9% .9 soulmates. They don't like each other. <laughs> they see each other all the time at a local coffee shop and she just kind of thinks that he's just a grumpy jerk and she doesn't think that he is in a position where he could like be somebody that would care for her daughter like a father figure it works out eventually because they don't like each other jess is like no i'm not gonna date you i literally don't like you if she says no then it's going to look bad on river's program it's still in testing it hasn't been released to the full public yet so if he starts getting bad press already that somebody is already unhappy with with their results and there's 99.9% .9 match has already failed. Nobody's gonna sign up for his dating app thing. So he convinces Jess for them to just fake date, do a couple interviews with me so that people think we're together. If we wanna call it off in a few months after the app is up and running, we can, I'll pay you. I know you need money to help support your daughter. What if we just fake date for a while? Obviously as most fake dating do, they end up falling in love. I think I three starred this. It's really popular. It's a lot of people's favorite books. I think if I read this a few years ago when I was younger, I would have loved it. I just think with the age that I am now, I just thought it was a little too simple. But I do recommend it. It's very popular. It's a good storyline. So Many Equation by Christina Warren. Following right up behind that, another Christina Warren, The Unhoneymooners. This follows Olive and Ethan. Olive's sister and Ethan's brother are getting married, so they are both the maid of honor and the best man. After their wedding, their brother and sister and the entire of the wedding party end up getting food poisoning. Olive and Ethan were the only people that didn't eat the food that made everybody else sick. So now the bride and groom can't go on their honeymoon, but it's already paid for. They can't get a refund. So they give their tickets and their spots to Olive and Ethan because they're like, hey, we can't go. Someone else may as well enjoy this. Like, take some time off. Go enjoy yourselves. But the catch is... Olive and Ethan have to pretend that they're married because their little vacation thing they're going on is like exclusive for like married people. So if somebody figures out they're not together or they're single, they'll get kicked off of this honeymoon and they'll lose all of the money that they've spent paying for it. Olive and Ethan, again, don't like each other. It's another grumpy sunshine. They've never liked each other. Olive doesn't like his brother and doesn't like him. Also them forced proximity in a way because they're trapped in a hotel room together. I loved their relationship. There were some scenes that made me mad and if you've read the book you will know why. If you have not read it, find out. But I do recommend it. I think I four-starred this book. Not my favorite book of all time but I still highly
definitely recommend it. So if you have not checked it out, go take a look at it. Neon Honeymooners by Christina Warren. So next, another Kindle Unlimited, The Love Jason Thorne by Ella Mays. So this follows Jason and yet again, Olive. I feel like Olive is like the female equivalent of Josh because this is like the third book where the main female character's name is Olive. And I feel like 90% of men in books are either Josh or Adam. This is also like a brother's best friend situation. Olive has grown up with Ethan there her entire life. He comes from poor, unhealthy family dynamic, moves away to go live with his father when they are still children. Olive becomes an author. She writes this super popular romance novel and she bases the main character of her romance novel off of Jason because she's been in love with him since she was a child. So she writes this character pretending that it's the love life she always wanted with Jason. It gets super popular and it's about to be turned into a movie. She goes to meet with production to figure out casting and stuff for her book adaptation to movie and unknown to her they have hired Jason because he is now a famous LA actor to play her main character. So Jason that she's written the story off of is now supposed to play the main character. He like sees Olive again and he's like oh my gosh I haven't seen you in years like you're so pretty blah 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 and she's just kind of like oh my god like he's gonna figure out that I wrote this book about him it's gonna be so weird. They eventually start fake dating because Jason is again in a situation where he has bad press. His PR manager wants him to settle down and get into a relationship to kind of lay low and keep press off of him because he has such a bad presence that he might get kicked off of Olive's movie. And so he's like, hey, Olive has been your best friend for years since you were a child. Like you don't want to ruin this opportunity for her. You want to keep this movie. It's going to pay you. And so he convinces Olive for them to fake date to kind of save the movie and save his reputation. Again, it's fake dating. They eventually fall in love. It's a very cute story. This is one of my favorite like romance books of 2021. I loved it. I five starred it. I made my heart happy. I loved their relationship. Jason just like turned my heart to goop. But yeah, I highly recommend it. Go check it out if you haven't. But yeah, those are my fake digging, marriage of convenience, book recommendations. Hopefully I gave you guys some new recommendations that you haven't heard before that you seem interested in. Have you guys read any of these yet? What did you think about them? If you have any of your own recommendations for fake dating or marriage of convenience, feel free to leave them below in the comments. I will also appreciate it. But yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you'd like to follow me anywhere else, um, all of my social medias will be linked down in the description box as well as on my home screen channel banner. Also linked down below will be my Amazon book wish list if you guys want to send me any books and I will do some unboxings for you. I'd appreciate it. But yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you. Stay safe. I love you and I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet. Bye!